back another marketing RV with Renali and Bolfi. Hey, Gene, what's going on, man? Back to vagina chatter. Oh, would you yes. cut it with that? Yes, Come my on. favorite show of the week. The, you know, well, that's listen, just so wrong. I think it's not. It's right on the money, but you have to be listening to the show to understand what that means. So go back to episode one. Okay. Right? They have to go back to episode oh, one. Oh, you're going to make them do it. I thought yeah, you no, wanted me, me to recap. No, not me. No, 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 no. Put the work in. Let them go back to episode one and figure out why I call it that. That's like our um, like the marketing RV, aka vagina chatter. Yeah, it's not though, guys. It's not. You know why? But here's the deal: right. people tuning in for the first time, the first few seconds, thirty seconds of the show, they're mm-hmm. going, "What the hell is this crap?" And they're going to turn it off. That's a good point. Or as some people might say, "I like this." Oh, crap. hey. Yeah. Well, when you told me the name of your previous podcast, Kuchina, vagina chatter. Kachina. Oh, Kachina chatter. Kachina chatter. How do we screw that up? Why do I screw that up? Because you really like to, and that's where your brain is. Okay. okay yeah. Okay. Yeah. What has your wife said about all that anyway? Um, my head? wife shakes my head and goes, I guess, you're such an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> that's what she says. But that's anything. Like, anything I do in life. It's not just a podcast. When is she going to come out? When are we going to meet her? If we brought my wife out here, you and I would get no airtime. She, she would chat talks, that much? Oh, my She's God. She's a kekido? Nah, not really. I'm more the kekido than she is, for I'm sure. I'm not surprised. For sure. I'm not But no, but she would get on. She would get, especially if I had a glass of wine in front of her. All right. You know what I wanted to talk about today? I'm listening. I'm going to throw this at you. Blogging and how important is blogging to your business? Hmm. Hmm. Because you posted an article mm. recently about that. You, which one? You, what? Yeah, six you bad social media um, oh, habits. Oh, tactics or what habits? Yeah. Yeah, that you need to break. I don't and, know. I, and one of it said one of the number one thing was a lack of a blog. And I find that interesting because a lot of people are into white papers, white papers, and I'm thinking, who reads them? Yeah. Nobody reads anything. People anymore. do. It's funny. People. A lot of people. You'd be surprised. A lot of people still read. And. So when we talk about marketing, like a lot of the stuff we talk about is video. Mm -hmm. And video goes a bunch of different ways. And one of the ways that they, a lot of people take video. You ever hear services like Trench? Or there's a couple, there's services out there that will actually take your videos and your audio. Mm -hmm. And through uh, artificial intelligence, strip the text out of it. So for a dollar a minute or 15 cents a minute, let's say, I can upload my video to them. Okay. Let's say it's me and you doing an audio podcast, 30 minutes of it. Right. It would cost me three bucks okay. to have them transcribe that into all text. Oh. And then you use that because of the... So think about what it is. When Google comes through, like, you know what a meme is? Yeah. You know why they created memes? No. Because artificial intelligence can't read memes. Oh. So it's a way to hide your content. Okay. From people that are just have bots going out and searching it. Okay. Right? So why would you want to hide that? Well, for, no, I wouldn't. Okay. But people hide stuff. Well, listen, it's taken a life of its own okay, now. Yeah, now yeah. It's, they have it's different fun. purpose. Yeah, yeah. But the original intent. reason, yeah, the intent was because if they wanted to put something out there that was banned by Facebook, let's say, mm-hmm. Facebook's AIs go through the text. If it's not in the text and it's in a picture, it can't pick it up. I got So you, you can violate the terms through a meme right. and not have to worry about it too much, right? Okay. So, I, I don't even know where I was going with that. But from, from this text perspective, oh, I know where I was going. Google and these other sites, like when, when Google's do a, a, like a web a search crawl, right? right? And so in order for your site to rank, if it's all video and all memes, Google can't pull the keywords that so it needs. So you're not ranking, so you're we'll not rank. coming up. Okay. So what we typically do is, we'll, video for me is still number one. Right. But if you're really concerned about, let's say, for example, so we have some friends that are with us tonight, right? Mm-hmm. So David Joslin, who's a friend of mine, is a real estate agent in my area. Let's just take Newtown Square. Okay. If he wants to be picked up for Newtown Square and he has a bunch of memes on his website that say Newtown Square, Google's not smart enough to read that. Right. But if he does a video and says Newtown Square in it five times and then we transcribe it into text and, and you put a blog. And the text, yes. There you go. Okay. So, so, so for me, really, I don't write anymore. What I do is when it's important enough, I'll do a minute video, mm-hmm. have it transcribed by a service for a dollar, mm-hmm. and then re-edit it just to make sure it sounds like me. Because, you know, you've, you've heard me talk long enough to know I... I use slang. Okay. It's kind of hard to pick up. A, a bot is hard to. Tra- it has a hard time. What the pop? I'm popping. Yeah, you're popping. You can say it out loud. That's no, all right. I, I Why wanna, am I popping? I don't know, but you are. <laughs> yeah, not that kind of popping. <laughs> but got Dave over here doing a 1980s so, dance. So, so what I'll do is, what I'll do is I'll transcribe it, have it transcribed, and throw it up so that if people are searching for marketing or social media or real estate or whatever it is that I want them to find me for. It's in the body. So okay. I do my blogs, quote unquote blogs, mm-hmm. by doing a video okay. and then having a service transcribed. So okay. I don't have to write. 
Now, I love to write, and right? I do blog, and I've blogged for a lot of different sites and, you know, various employers and stuff. But, such. You, but you probably like to write. I do. See, I, I'm don't. a writer. So, no, no, but my point is, it's, it's I get it from that perspective, mm-hmm. from your perspective now. Um, my perspective was put the content out there to be more engaging, to be, you know, found on Google, and also to give your potential viewers a little nugget of information, which is what we try to do when we do our little blogs yeah. to accompany these shows when we post them, right? And listen, I also know that some people would rather read mm-hmm. than watch a video. Yeah, no, I think most people like to watch. It's easier, you know? People do, though, but still, yeah. I, there's still something to be said. You'd be surprised when I talk to my agents. Especially, I feel like it's a lot, like in real estate, mm-hmm. real estate, the average age of real estate is 57 now, or maybe 58 or whatever it is. And those folks would much rather read a newspaper. What mm-hmm. happened? We lose something? No, it's just your audio is off. But go ahead. All right. You get, they get more of me or less? They're getting a little less of you because you put little, your mic well, down we so you wouldn't pop. You just have to like not pop your pee. I don't peas. know how to not pop. You just kind of eat the pee when you say it. I'm not it. eating nothing. <laughs> if I'm eating anything, it's going to be something from DeFabio's. Which is where we are tonight. Oh, oh a nice that. little segue. That was a nice slide in. <laughs> we got people are saying the escarole soup is awesome. Yeah, so I had that. It really was good. Oh, you did eat that prior to. I did. I, I was, was in here last week. What did I have? I forget. Of course, you forgot. I think it was I had last a week. chicken cheese thing. I don't know. It was good though. It was good. No, no, no. It was great. They're I, known. Their their signature thing. I think it still is. It's pistachio. Is it the pistachio chicken? That's what. Really that's good. what your husband, who's sitting all by himself, is that all what over he's there. Eating? That's what he's eating. The pistachio chicken. Damn. Yeah, and I could have got a piece. He said, you want some? I said, no, I'm not going to take your chicken. Shoot, he didn't yeah. offer me any. No, he didn't. That's right. He oh, likes me better than you. Yeah, Go figure he probably that. does. Yeah. Go figure that. Yeah. I don't bitch as much as you do. <laughs> See that? See the difference? <laughs> <laughs> See the difference? And he knows I cook an awesome meatball, too. Does he? Oh, I don't know if he does that or not, but he can find out. <laughs> he wouldn't know the difference. Now everybody, they should know. <laughs> Wait, did I ever tell you the, the, the famous Bob story about meatballs? I can't wait to hear it. Okay, so Bob and I start dating, right? Now, I'm, I'm excited because I got this Irish-German guy, and I'm going to impress him with my cooking. And so, you know, I make him a big pot of gravy, and, and I invite him over, and I'm Sauce. looking. Sauce. Yeah, whatever. And I'm looking. That's the difference between West Philly and No, uh, I'm South kidding. Philly. It's gravy. If there's meat so, in it, it's gravy. So I'm feeding him, and I'm looking for a reaction. I'm expecting, like, wow, I've never had something so awesome. And he's just eating, you know. And I said, I had to prompt him. I said, so what do you think? Do you, do you, you, know, do you like my, my gravy? And he's like, yeah, it's good. I said, meatballs? Yeah, you know, I, I, I eat for fuel. So if it's yours, Wawa's, what's the difference? Ah! Oh, and listen, <laughs> so here's the best part. What is, it's another great segue. And with that ringing endorsement, go out and pick up Lorraine's book, Gravy Wars. <laughs> Don't spit all over the, all over the boards. Oh, my God. She just took a drink and now she's gonna spit. <laughs> yeah, but go buy Gravy Wars, right? So yeah. we could we could throw that in there. Go find but Gravy you, Wars. Look, I love Wawa, but really, come no, on, no, no, Wawa no, no, no. Meatballs. not for that's, meatballs. That's like a sin. And here we were talking about my wife. My wife is anti anybody else's meatballs. I, I understand. I no know meatballs. She's not allowed like to get meatballs out. Yeah, no, no. Oh, no. see, I like Roy Tweedy meatballs. I don't yeah, mind them. Yeah, a lot of people do, and he's my butcher. They're, that's where I go. Yeah, yeah I don't but, mind him. Like, if you're in a, here's what I would say is okay, if you're having sixty people. Crap. You know what I mean? No. If you're if you want to be Bull. lazy and you're no. having sixty call people, BS. you know what? You can call BS. I make get your, it. Make your own. And, oh, <laughs> we have somebody in the audience that's saying she does Roy Tweedy meatballs with Lydia's Lydia Bastianich's gravy. <laughs> Why is that? Like she's like Lorraine is having a stroke well, right in front okay of me right now. Well, it's okay because even though her name ends in a vowel, it's only by marriage, so she gets a pass. All right, fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> it's a true so story. So where we were going down the, the rabbit hole um, of uh, blogs, I, I want to know how important it is for your website. Does it depend uh, on the business? Does it depend on you know? Uh, you know, I guess part of it depends. Yeah, so it depends on everything you just said. But I think part of it also too is, are you doing the majority of your lead generation from your website? That's like always, four, it always comes back to that. It what, does. What's four, driving year, this? four years ago, you had to have that because that's where people were consuming your content. Mm-hmm. Chances are so slim now, for, in most cases, that people are coming to your website and spending more than five minutes there. Right. So right. blogs don't matter that much. What matters more is that you're consistent with your content across multiple streams, multiple channels, multiple platforms. So that when people Google you or your service in your area, yes. that you pop up. Yes. Right? And it's interesting. So now this isn't a plug. This is what I do. Now, I had the show Kachina Chatter in 2010. Kachina Chatter. Okay. 2010 through 2012. And um, and I had the blog to go along with it, kachinachatter.com. And so I posted all my shows there. You know, I was podcasting without being on, you know, Apple and Google Play and all that mm-hmm. like we are now. 
because I just didn't know how to do that. I should have investigated it. But, yeah. you know, that was then. But the thing is, I was really trying to drive traffic with my blog. I would write constantly. Um, I have since let that whole website go, and I don't even have some of those posts anymore. Really? Yeah, isn't that crazy? You can't um, find it? If I search your name, it doesn't come up anymore? No, the site's dead. I let no, it go. It's gone yeah, it's not cached. Yeah, there's nothing there. But what I, cause what I started doing was I started writing uh, for LinkedIn. So all my blogs, if you will, are li LinkedIn Pulse, you know? And it's interesting, too. Um, well, I'm not going to go down Well, that LinkedIn path. has a, a, a good blogging feature. They really Their do. Their blog, and it, and it ranks well. And and I think it's a nice way, especially, I just love LinkedIn. That's like my favorite playground. So I like a social media playground because yep. it's all business. You yeah, know? It's professional, yeah. And uh, I think it's a great way to find content. I find a lot of content there, yeah. and I contribute to I the content I call it the pants-on platform. The pants-on? Pants-on, yeah. So if you follow me on you Facebook, see, there's you a see lot. see the pattern here? What? Everywhere he goes is below the belt. Like, below the belt. Gee. Well, no, we know this. I mean, there's people that follow this have seen me on podcasts. There's there's always a 60% chance I have no pants on. Yeah, not if we're doing a video podcast. You don't know. You like you can't see right now if I have pants on. I can see. You can't tell. He's like, hey, nah. you got jeans on. But, but LinkedIn is the pants on platform, right? Okay. Facebook, you're getting your 15-year-old kid in a jacuzzi in the mountains, right? Smoking a joint. On LinkedIn, I'm there for to get a job to hire people. Like it's it's different. I, I There's a different yeah, feed, I which is why you saying. like it. It's, it's very much why I like it. Yes. You're you're getting old. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Just shut up. So you're let's good. talk. Have to, a little fun, Renali. Let's, let's talk. I know, right? I yeah. How much time we got? We got time. Let's talk to Dave. Let's find out what he does. I don't want to talk to Dave. Dave does real estate. Gene does real estate. No, right? I don't do real estate. I'm out of that game. Well, you do a lot of promotion for real estate. No, yeah, that, that That's much what is I'm true. talking about. Yeah, that much is true. A lot yeah. of your clientele right, is So here what I want to know. If I slide this thing over. You're going to move your mic we're, over we're gonna, and Gene's we're gonna hear gonna this. going to talk into your mic. Yeah, you go. you're going to hear that. Just Dave Joslin, welcome to the show. Thank you, Gene Volpe. Dave Joslin, you need to really speak into that mic. Yeah, I know. I, I kind of, I have a low speaking voice. This is a guy that uh, DJed for years um, for Kenny Schaefer, who, who I know. Hey, Ken. And uh, still does, still does a lot of emceeing. Yep. And you sell houses on the side? No, not necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would think that, yeah, my full-time career is real estate. I'm a real estate broker. Been doing it for 15 years. Got back into the MC and DJ realm about eight years ago. So Okay, um, so you, you, I'm going to take you down the real sure. estate path. So you had told me that you know Gene because you coached him in ethics? No, in listen, macrame, listen, I don't what think, did you coach? I don't think Gene had an ethics coach at all. <laughs> bocce? Never were you his that. bocce coach? What no, I think it? I coached him in wine. In wine? Yeah, we were talking Oh, he's about, a whiner. Yeah, 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 he is. He's a wino, <laughs> too. <laughs> definitely, definitely. No, I know Gene from back at, at West Catholic. We first met when he was freshman, sophomore in high school, and um, I coached him. Freshman. Coached him I in coached what? him at, at West Catholic football. What, football, yep. okay. yeah, football. Yeah, like it's assumed. I don't yep. know. I mean, no, I, it's, I'm, it's I'm, football. I'm pretty like, much assuming you didn't play basketball, and I, it's not a height joke. That it is. No, it's not. Let me no. Follow me here. He's like ready to hit me. Listen, that was either a height joke or very racist. Um, neither. It's okay, neither. go. I'll give you your shot. Go. It's, but it is an ethnic joke. Okay, and I can make this ethnic joke, but I steal this from. Did you ever see Sebastian Miniscalco? Funny as heck. But he does this thing. He says. Italians, we don't play basketball. Come on, when's the last time you were at an NBA game and you had, hey, Nunzio, shoot it, go for the three-pointer. <laughs> it's so true. He does it that. Whole, you got to look. Oh, my God. I love Maniscalco, so he, he's good. But anyway, that's that's the joke because he's Italian. Yep. Motto. Otherwise, he'd have been a guard. You'll be happy to know that I light up the rim like I light up the mic. I bet you do. How do you like that? I... I I don't doubt you. He's mad now. <laughs> He's not a copywriter. He's not. <laughs> <laughs> so my my where I was going. So you met him through coaching. Yep. You stayed in touch. Does he coach you now on how to market your real estate business? Absolutely. Yeah. Gene and I have a we have a unique relationship because actually we met. He uh, he saw me in the back of one of those personal. church. No, nah, no, nah, I won't. It's, it's in the back of the church bulletin. <laughs> you know, Gene, Gene saw my picture. You know, it's all real. It's all good real estate agents do. They advertise every now and again. He saw my picture. He says, wait a minute. I know that dude. So in church one day, he came back up to me and says, hey, you know, I, you know, I introduced himself and, and we got back in touch. We set up a, a little coffee meeting as we always do. And mm. that had to be six years ago almost. Yeah. So we've been we've been keeping in touch ever since. So Gene does 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 a lot of coaching 
for the marketing and the real estate business. I mean, he's, he's a guru when it comes to that. Phenomenal. So what was the best piece of advice that really paid off for you that Gene gave you? Show up tonight. <laughs> Talk to <laughs> Lorraine. On, right? On, it's like, on, you know, yeah. just like, just follow me what I do. Like the, the teacher becomes the, the student, as they say, That's right? That's so, too cool. Um, now I try to follow a lot of what Gene does. He's, he's a huge influencer, and he's, he's got the national spotlight in, at times. Yeah, he so, does. Yeah, he he does. really does. He's out in the speaking circuit the so, whole bit. You know? Yep, and he's in our backyard. So it's, it's a great com. thing. Yep, GVI Media. And let me ask you this. How was he as a football player? I... I don't remember him. Really? So yeah, he was he was unimpressionable. <gasps> yeah. Just, Would you bench him? I think we did. Oh my god. I think we did. Yeah. <laughs> because when when you called like everybody, I think we out, had to because of his grades. He no, was <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> he was the guy after the game rolling the keg out onto the field or something like that. <laughs> yep. Yeah. He's not denying he, it either. He left practice early to go get the tap. So. <laughs> We heard runner. those stories. Anybody from Overbrook knows that they were all in the, in the fields in their little underground forts, you know, drinking in the, in the back in so the fields funny. there. So, yeah. So, so for our national audience, Overbrook is a section of West Philadelphia um, and very Italian back in the day, right? Still. No, yeah. no, no. That was pretty multicultural. A well, lot of yeah, it was I different it pockets. Was. It was a lot, very was, Irish yeah. in spots. You had Jewish, yeah, yeah, Italian. Where sort of where we were, where especially where my wife was. Right. I was more like they used to call me the mutt. Yeah. I was what you would call metagon. Really? Yeah, because I'm not 100. percent So You're like not? I'm nah, oh, 75. God, You're out. Mic, yeah. I'm out of here. yeah. No, I like the I like the my my. It sounds like I am, but no, I'm like 75. My dad was 100. My mom was 50 50. Mm-hmm. So figure that math out, whatever okay. that is. See, I was smart enough with all that grade talk, smart enough to figure that out. You probably didn't know it, did you? <laughs> and the reason why I didn't, that he benched me in football is because I was, you're, you're no, listen guy. to me, listen. Oh, why, it's too much? <laughs> this, we got to get a new audio engineer. Our audio engineer sucks. You know what? What? You're eating the microphone. Now put it down and talk to him. <laughs> I, I know, she's to. terrible. It's terrible. I don't know why no, I, I do this. I told him to eat his peas, not eat the microphone. <laughs> All right, how's this sound? How's that? Yeah. Is that better? Uh, now you're really now killing I'm me. killing it? Yeah, yeah. No. yeah. this is great. She's the so consummate much. pro, and I'm like, listen, if they can hear it, it doesn't matter. I'm going to have so much editing to do. You are going to have a lot of editing. Yeah. You do a good job, though. Thank but you. back to Dave. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's it. Back to Dave. We didn't no, even let you finish your story. I'm dropping the mic. He just puts it right down in front of me. I know. Just like, I know. I'm done. Well, Christine Rizzo's here as well, yes. and and I want to give her a shot on the mic. So Christine came out to see us because she follows us on Facebook, Marketing RV on Facebook, and she um, saw that we were going to be here at the Fabios tonight. So she came on out, and I said, "Well, long as you're here, she's got a marketing background." I said, "Why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do and the foundation that you are um, running?" Oh. Thank you. So I am an executive director at the Shevlin Family Foundation. So we support families and people that are struggling with addiction, um, especially coming out of treatment, because when they come out of treatment, they're super vulnerable. So for a lot of people that don't have the financial resources, they need short-term housing to get into a recovery community and that's how people are going to stay clean being in a community that makes them accountable and right um and then we also basically we provide for the basic needs so food housing transportation clothing linens i delivered a pizza last friday nice you know someone that got out of treatment parents are done with him heroin addict and just said you know you're on your own you got to figure this out so, well, let me stop you. So, two questions that come to my mind. Number one is, well, you can do them in reverse. Well, the second question will be easier. How did you get started into it, if it's not too personal? And the second part was, how do, how do these people find, how do you find the people that need the help? Or how do the people that need the help find you? I don't know which one's more pertinent. Yeah, but those are, those are good questions. So, first, how we started. Um, I'm one of seven. So, good Irish Catholic family. Grew up in the heart of Delco. St. Right. Andrew's Parish, there you go. Brandy Bonner. Shout out. Yes. So, But I'm the oldest, right? I have five brothers and one sister. Okay. So three of my brothers struggled with addiction, um, you know, through, through their life. I mean, they still do. It's, a, it's an everyday struggle. So um, my parents about five years ago said, you know, they're getting older. They're thinking, how can we get back to the community? How can we make a difference? And they wanted to do, to step in to the gap, basically, for those who didn't have the financial means that their sons had. 
you know, to get into a recovery community, to have the support of family. So they stepped in. I'm the third executive director now. Nice. Um, I've only been at it for six months. I come from the business field. I was in the stock and bond market, consulted legal consulting which for a is, little while. Which is overlooked and very important when it comes to charities. The business aspect of that is not something to be, I mean, to be overlooked. I, there's so much that goes into that. Yes. Right? I, you know what I struggle with now just from a business perspective? And that's really why I came because... Being an educator, I feel like I'm a lifelong learner. There's always more stuff that I need to learn and know. So now I'm in a nonprofit, but it's just me. Right. So how do I market effectively, be consistent with my branding, mm -hmm. and get the word out? Like um, I set some small goals just about Facebook followers. I'm like, why do I only have 1,500 Facebook followers? Well, it's not anything to shake a stick at. That's important. Uh, That's still pretty good. How long has the Facebook page been up? It's probably been up for three years, okay. maybe four and years. And how long have you had control of it? Uh, six months. That's Listen, 1,500 is something that you can capitalize on, so you've got to figure out the best ways to engage that audience. Oh. And then once you start engaging, so what happens is it's like a snowball effect. When you have five people, if one of the five tells one of their friends, now you have right. six. If you have 1,500 people and 600 of those people tell one of their friends, now you get 2,100. So what happens is that ball starts rolling down the hill the more active you are. Now, mm -hmm. Facebook's making it a little more difficult for you because you have to be very, very active. That's the thing. So in most cases, either you gotta hire somebody or you gotta be all over it. And that's, mm -hmm. so I'll give you a couple examples. So for example, when we're done this tonight, and this helps us, by the way, just to be transparent, we'll snip it out, some of the video that's being shot, we'll snip it out some of the audio, we'll take pictures of us together, those are pieces of content that you should be putting out on your page. Okay. And people will then see, like, oh, wait, how did she get started in this? Oh, I never knew that about Christine. That's really cool. Okay. Then the conversation starts. How can I help? I didn't know you were doing that. So all these little elements, you got to give the people that are following you everything you can, and they'll tune in to what they want and respond to what they want. And it's going to be different for everybody. So that's, what's make, that's what makes it difficult, right. right? So your biggest thing now is content, content, a little more content, some content, <laughs> some video, more content. How about some content? How about some content? <laughs> but you get the point, right? Like, and we talked about this, Dave and I talk about this all the time. Four years ago, content is king. Now it's forever continuous content is now king. Like, just having content's not enough. Because of the algorithms and the way that's cool, then the way things that the, the way things change so rapidly. Right. You know, four or five years ago, if you had fifteen hundred people, you post a video of us, eleven hundred see it. Now you're lucky if eight see it. Hmm. You know, and that's not really the number. It's probably closer to one hundred, one hundred and ten. But for if you do the math, if a hundred people see stuff that you post every time you post it, you have to post fifteen pieces of content before everybody on your page sees it. Wow. Theoretically, right? That's not how it works, but you get the idea. So your job now is to take pictures, have people engage. So what ends up happening, this is the way marketing works now. You post a picture of us and you tag us, and then I share it. And now my 4,500 friends now see that you have a charity. You come from Brilliant Delco. Idea. See how that works? Brilliant so you, idea. So all this stuff is done by design. You're cherry picking your people. So I even say to Lorraine, like when we go bring out guests, don't find it, and this is going to sound awful, but from a marketing perspective, if you're doing stuff like this, find somebody that has a shit ton of clout, right? So when they, and you say to them up front, now, and I'll do this to you, Christine. So, so you were here, you were a guest of ours doing this, you were nice enough to come out. When we're done this, would you share our podcast with your friends? Absolutely. Right? Even though, I, even though I got a foul mouth, as my mom would say? Well, I don't know. All right. yeah, I'll Just tell people NSFW, not safe for work. And I'm not really that bad. I just say butt a little bit, right? And I and heard so, some stories about pants. Pants. Earlier, yeah, but that's not, there's nothing so, wrong with that. There's yeah. nothing wrong. I didn't curse. That's safe for work. But in any case, so here you go. She's doing it now. This is brilliant. So take a picture of the, of the crew, and then you're going to take this and put your logo on it or however you're going to do it and put it out there. I don't even know what that here, is. That's all right. David, help her through it. Help her through swift, flipping <laughs> that camera. It's okay. So this is where you get started. Like, here, so here's a big thing that everybody gets caught in, right? The, the challenge is most people, what you just did, so let me, let me play it for the audience. She pulled her phone out, wasn't quite sure how to get, you, are you okay with this, right? It's a new phone. It's so a new yeah. phone, fine, that's good. Didn't quite get everybody in the picture, and you, of course you're on the spot, so you gotta do it quick. Right. Couldn't get everybody, to the, you know, and so what happens is most people go, ah, screw it, and they stick the phone back in their pocket. 
you have to fight through the uncomfortableness of everything you're about to do. Okay. And eventually it becomes second nature. So that's what will happen. So it's like, this is what I tell my real estate agents, right? When we deal with clients, I go, here's, I don't know how to create content. I go, you don't have to do anything different that you do on a daily basis except take your hand, hit a button, and bring the phone up to your face. So you can't see me, but what I'm saying is everything you do on a regular basis, you still do. So you run out and you deliver pizza. You do all that. Now, in your case, I got to be careful because we don't want to make the charity work look like you're trying to get bonus points on video. Yes. So be, I, would, I wouldn't be running my video I camera. I did do a video last week for the first time. Okay. Continue to do that. Yes. Get comfortable with being uncomfortable and having the camera up, right. and eventually you won't be uncomfortable anymore. And the more you do that, the more people will see your stuff. Does that make sense? One other quick idea, though, for, for the content, you go back to PR 101, and when she's telling other people's stories, or better yet, they're telling their story and how they were impacted by her foundation, then that goes and helps, you know, with you mean awareness. as far as, like, let's say, like a testimonial? Testimonials and just, yeah, and, and anything. You know, if she's just out there taking video, not necessarily of herself, so it doesn't appear self-serving, but of right. other people that she would like to help or things like, you know. So she's going to a real estate seminar. Yep. Um, she's here talking to Dave who's in real estate who sells houses. Yep. She's thinking about how do I raise enough funds through my charity where I can build a house for recovery for people to go to, you know. Um, and she can talk about those kinds of things and, and gain more, um, you know, followers that way as well. Well, one of, the, one of the things that Gene and I were just talking about is, like, recently I went through a transformation myself. So I lost 50 pounds over the last six months. Mm -hmm. And the biggest set of reaction and engagement that I've had on Facebook was the videos that I put out telling my story. So when you look at that story and you personalize that story... Then you're, grow you're drawing people into the engagement. So it's not about a sale. It's not about the fundraising. Right. You're talking about the story that you have to tell. And Gene and I were talking about it today. He goes, dude, you just got to keep doing that then. Like that's your engagement. That's what people want to hear. They want to hear the story and they want to hear what's going on in reality. It's not just the sales pitch. It's the reality of the story. So by telling the story of your weight loss, now people are looking, who is this guy? Oh, he's a realtor. And they're connecting the dots on their, on their own. So I want to jump in that. Do we still have time for this? We do. We can we do a, a second episode if we need to. We like will. We can roll this we into a second episode. We will. All right. Because So Dave said a couple things. And I think every, every – so, again, I keep going back to a couple years ago. A couple years – it was only just three, four, five years ago where it was just important to be there and look good, have a nice car. So as a real, especially in the real estate field, right? If you, if you were dressed to the nines and you looked slick and you had a Rolex on and you were rocking a Maserati, people knew, thought you were successful, right? The, the, the word of 2019 is vulnerability and emotion. And so here's what people have shifted to. Brené Brown. Right? So here's what, here's what people have shifted to. They feel better with you when they can attach their emotion to something that you're going through. So for example, for Dave, Dave's an easy example. And actually, your, your thing is, is, is an easy example, too, though less talked about, right? Everybody struggles with their weight. I, I, that's just a big thing. Like, I wish I could do it. Well, you can, right? So now they get to see Dave doing it, and they go, well, shit, if Dave's doing it, I probably could do it, too, right? Like, what's he? Dave, you inspire me, right? Like, you, and, and go back and look at David Joslin's pictures from Dave, literally you inspire six, me. there you go, it's from six months ago, Right? Now, remember this, though. This is an important element, too. People that follow you and the charity might not care about Dave's weight loss. And people that follow Dave and his weight loss don't care about your, your charity. There will be a vacuum of people that follow you for the specific reason that they have somebody in their life that struggles with an addiction. Those are the people that you cater to. And what ends up happening is, and this is what we talked about today, Dave just mentioned it, you start to throw content up against the wall. right? You, know, you heard the old adage, let's throw it against the wall and see what sticks. You have to watch, and based off of the reactions, comments, likes, shares, and interaction on the post that you give, that's your audience telling you, give me more of that. So if, you, if your big thing is you go out and you're delivering a pizza, and people come out of the woodwork, and you get 65,000 views on a video of you delivering a pizza, you better go make relationships with pizza places and start doing it across the country to help benefit the charity. Because the people that are watching you are saying, Christine, we love that pizza gig. Keep doing it. So you have to watch on each platform 
what they're telling you by their actions that they want to see more of. In his case, well, so it's funny. In your, in Dave's case, it's weight loss. In my case, it's Italian hoagies. <laughs> so I just posted something literally last week that went completely nuts. Yeah. It was just a picture of a hoagie from a local area you know, market. And I was going to say to that post, I had a little issue with the bread, but I said I'm not going to go down that well, road. Well, that's I know another. Everybody... Listen, I'm going to tell you something. Am that right? is another example. That, no, that, the bread didn't look that. Well, no, 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 no. Because bread from being from Philly, mm -hmm. bread is seventy five percent of the whole sandwich. I understand. That's what and I'm saying. Trust me when hoagie, I tell you. Listen to me when I tell good. you. Well, I told you it's the best hoagie in the, you in the did, world. You did. So it has to it has to mean the bread was decent. Okay. okay. So I'm a Lissio's guy. For people that aren't Same. from Philly, I'm Lissio's. Too funny that you this said is, that. This is this was a um, what do they do? Uh, Amorosos? Is that Amoroso? Yeah. But listen, it doesn't matter. This stuff is so fresh. We're off on a tangent, but that that to me. Now I know I probably should be taste testing tacos and hoagies because that's where people are coming out of the woodwork. <laughs> and we're going to leave it. We're going to leave it right it there? there for now. All yeah. right. All right. Yeah, because it always comes back to food and Gene is always looking to be fed. You would think he was 400 pounds. He's not. He, he's a workaholic. These are true stories. Yeah, true, I, all true stories. I know. I yep. know. All right. We'll catch you next time. And we're going to continue this conversation into the next Close podcast. Close it down. Tell everybody. Listen, if it goes 31 minutes, it goes 31 minutes. I know. Tell we're everybody right. where to find us. Let's go. You tell everybody where to Gene find Volby. us. GeneVolby.com. LorraineRinale.com. Go buy Gravy Wars, people. And buy Impact, the book about public speaking, My Little Tips. That's a really good one. we got to talk All about right, that. All right, get Impact. Okay, do that too. Get I like Gravy them. Wars. I, I want you to get Gravy Wars, and you call me, and I'll taste test if you suck or not. How about that? <laughs> yeah. All right, wrap it up. Wrap it up. Where are we? Where's the podcast? Which one? This one. Oh, iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, Spotify, and our website. Which is, is marketingrv.com. There it is. Subscribe, you idiots. <laughs>